Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to the channel. In this micro lesson, I wanted to try to demystify the pentatonic scale patterns. You know, lots of times when we're trying to learn all five boxes, it gets a little bit confusing when we're just thinking of them solely as patterns. But if we start to look at them from the standpoint of the notes and the intervals that they represent, you might find a different pattern inside of these patterns that'll make it easier for you to memorize them all across the neck. Let me grab a guitar and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let me see if I can help demystify all these different pentatonic boxes. Let's start with our good old fashioned box one <laughs> that everyone loves. Start easy, right? So we know we have, we're gonna do all this in A minor pentatonics. So we know we have one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. And obviously everyone loves this box because our first finger is kind of staying in one spot while our other fingers play the notes. Now, here's where I think the demystifications can start happening. Let's look at the scale degrees that we're playing here, and let's notice the number of frets in between them. Here's an example of what I mean. So when we play the root, and then the flat three, we have two frets in between. And it's a one, four, right? First finger, fourth finger. When we play the fourth and the fifth, we have a whole step, so there's one fret in between that. When we do the flat seven to the root again, another whole step, so one, three, but a whole step. Flat three to four, whole step, so one, three. When we do the E, five, to flat seven, we have a one, four again, two frets in between. And again, back to the root and the flat three, we already know that's gonna be two frets in between. So what are we noticing here? Well, we're noticing every time we play the root with our first finger, we're always gonna follow it up by a four, or a fourth finger, or a stretch of three frets, one, two, three. And when we play the fifth, the E, in this case, with our first finger, it's also followed by our fourth finger, two frets away, three frets away. <laughs> Root to the flat three, fifth to the flat seven. Now, why is this helpful? Well, wherever, again, we start our first finger in all the patterns with either the root or the fifth, we know that we have to use our stretched out one forefingering. Now, where things get tricky, obviously, too, is when we start jumping strings and we get to the B string because of the way the guitar is tuned. But this can, again, if you know where the roots are and the fifths are, you can accommodate for that. And it actually can help you with shifting around through these patterns. So let's go ahead and start now with pattern two. And pattern two, we know, starts on the flat three. And so what do we already establish? We said when we have the flat three to the four, it'll always be a whole step or the one three that we're used to. But in this case, we're just gonna play it with two, four. Well, why would we do that? Well, look what's coming up next. The good old E note. And here's where we start again demystifying this. Well, for playing E, we automatically know we need a one, four. And guess what's next? A. We know we need a one, four again to get the flat seven. So we can see that this same pattern is happening with inside of these patterns. So again, this would be one, three, but we're gonna do two, four. One, four, because we're starting in the E. To the flat seven, root, to the flat four, one, four. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the, uh, the D to the E, which would be one, three. And then we're gonna do slide up because of the way that the guitar is tuned. The G, we know we need G from this pattern. So we're gonna do G, A, and then C, D. So the whole pattern looks like this. Slide up. And you'll notice every time we kind of come out of a root to a flat three, we're followed by one, three, one, three, one, three. So that's 
very helpful to know. So one thing to t help you kind of demystify again these all these patterns is always know where the root is, and you can get familiar with moving around inside of those patterns. Okay, so let's go ahead now and look at pattern three. Well, we know we had we start on the C, so we're going to start in D for this pattern. And we already know that we have that whole step happening. Another whole step. Well, look what's coming up. E. And what do we say the rule is? Well, if we have an E to the flat 7, we're going to have to use a 1-4. E to G. And then, we again, the way the st strings are tuned, we have to move up here for the A. So again, nice to know where the roots are. And again, what's the pattern when we have a root? We'll always have to do the fourth finger. And then followed by 1-3 just like we would do if we were here, or here. Oh, it's nice. So the same thing happens when we're inside of this pattern. Oh, we're getting to our E. Slide up for the A. And now we have demystified box number three. So here's how I like to look at box four. I like to look at it as a slight variation of box one. <laughs> to me, then, it's less boxes to memorize if I can knock one out and relate it to something else. So what do I mean by that? Well, box one again, we had the one four, one three, one three, one three, one four, one four. And we notice we're starting on A, and again, the formula that we're doing is we're always gonna have a one four pattern when we do that. Well, for box four, which would start on E here, I can see here that the root is on the 12th fret of the A string, obviously. So I can do the same pattern that I did for box one to get through this, to learn this pattern quickly, right? Because it's not that much different. One, four, one, three, one, three. Again, the way the guitar is tuned, we would do a one, three here. But let's use two, four, just to keep our fingers ready for the next pattern, which would be what? An E to a flat seven. So again, E to G, which we know, again, is always going to be a one, four. And we know since this is the high E string, the same notes happen here on the low E string. So to me, this is like the second easiest pattern to memorize, right? Because it's so familiar to the first pattern. And now we've hopefully demystified pattern number four. So let's move up to the final pattern, pattern number five. And we're going to start that on G, right? So we'll do G, A, C, D. Oh, what's coming up next? <laughs> you got it. E to the flat 7. So E to G. So the 5 to the flat 7, which we know the rule now. 1, 4. What's next? Root to the flat 3. 1, 4 again. Then... So hopefully you can see what <laughs> the method to the madness is. Really understanding the intervals that you're playing and what follows it with your fingerings, I really think will help you memorize all five of the pentatonic shapes a lot easier. That's another micro lesson down. Would you do me a favor and maybe consider helping me grow the channel by subscribing down below, hitting the like button, and knock on the bell? All these things really do help me out, and I'm so grateful for your support. As always, I wish you a great day.